You just let me know when we can start, then I will do that. Yeah, you can. Shall I now? Yes, yes. Okay. So, good evening to all. So today we are here for the PTMT Day 2023, which is a part of the program Curry Leave Days 2023, organized by the Curry Leave Maths Club of MTTS Alumni. This is the second time when we are celebrating the PTMT Day. The first event of the program is the joint presentation by Dr. Rohit Gandhi and Mr. Rohit Upadhyay on the topic, Empowering Educators for Mathematical Excellence, a Voice Through PTMT. Dr. Rohit Gandhi has been working as the Assistant Professor of Mathematics, Government Degree College, Indora, District Kangra, Himachal Pradesh since 2017 and attended the MTTS program in 2004 and PTMT programs in 2019 and 23. Dr. Rohit Upadhyay currently pursuing his doctorate from MNIT Allahabad, Priyagraj, Uttar Pradesh. He is also a PTMT alumna 2019. Followed by the presentation, some of the PTMT alumni of the PTMT program 2019 and 23 will share their experiences. Following other speakers, Dr. Krishan Sharma, Assistant Professor of Mathematics, Government College for Women, Guruvara Rivari, Haryana. Mr. Chankor Singh, alumna PTMT 2023, Dr. Sunil Kumar Sharma, Assistant Professor of Mathematics, Government Degree College, Nadun, Himachal Pradesh. Now I request the speakers, please proceed for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for giving uh, us the opportunity uh, for this day. So good evening to all. And uh, I feel privileged to share the journey of uh, PTMT uh, uh, today. So, first of all, I want to, uh, I am very thankful uh, to Kari Lee for involving uh, PTMT alumnus in this series. And uh, the topic for uh, our presentation is Empowering Educators for Mathematical Excellence, a voyage through PTMT. So this topic uh, we have decided because uh, we realized that we have got some power after attending PTMT. So in this presentation, I will share the following points. So the first point. First point is we will see how the journey of PTMT uh, started. Then we see the objectives laid down by PTMT. We will see the PTMT camps presence across India and followed by the academic structure of PTMT camp. We will see some photographs uh, from different uh, PTMT program. And uh, the most important section of this presentation is experience at PTMT by PTMT alumni already ma'am discussed about that and some future activities and you can say suggestions we will discuss in this presentation so let's start with the journey so if we see from year 1993 mtts that is mathematics training and talent search program under the dynamic leadership of professor s kumarisan has motivated a large number of students to pursue a career to pursue their career career in mathematics so feedback is a crucial part of this mtts program and after getting a feedback uh, from various participants it was uh, thought and then decided to start a program so that uh, teaching methodology of mtts can be inculcated in teachers also and uh, which will further 
uh, expand the approach of uh, learning and thinking and hence solving the problems efficiently and effectively among students so with this idea uh, ptmt that, that is pedagogical training for mathematics teacher came into existence so what are the objectives behind that so the very first objective is to foster the mtts teaching methodology in teachers also so that it can further pass on to the students moreover the targeted uh, teachers are uh, the teachers who are start, who are teaching undergraduate and postgraduate post graduate classes moreover some school teachers are also involved in this ptmt programs and uh, second one is to create a platform to facilitate connection among mathematics teachers in different part of country and uh, creating a vibrant uh, mathematics uh, teacher community and third one is to work toward improving the teaching and learning of mathematics at all the levels so whether it is uh, in mtts we talk about two way communication so is same in ptmt this thing uh, is highlighted and all at all levels means in terms of students we can say and in terms of teacher and moreover levels uh, you can say about ug pg and even school also so with these objectives ptmt move forward and then the programs of ptmt was start, was started starting from 2011 it was a one week program so it was held in tamil nadu madurai and after that in 2012 two programs uh, were conducted one is of one week and other one is of two week in 2014 one program is conducted sorry two programs that is one week and uh, another one is of two weeks again Uh, in 2015 two programs were conducted both are of uh, one week in 2016 two programs are conducted uh, both are of again one week and uh, in 2018 uh, one program of two weeks and uh, in 2019 two programs of uh, one week are were conducted in uh, chittur and assam in 2020 two programs were conducted one of two weeks and another one of one week and in 2023 two programs uh, were completed one in punjab another one in j and k and uh, one program is uh, uh, forthcoming program that is in tamil nadu vit and this is of one week again so if we see the summary so overall ptmt uh, has conducted uh, 16 programs out of which uh, five camps were of two weeks duration and 10 were one week and one was for two days so ptmt has shown its presence in all over india if we see the map in our next slide so if you see there the four programs were conducted in tamil nadu overall two in maharashtra punjab kerala and tripura one in andhra pradesh j and k mumbai and assam ptmt will explore further if the colleges and universities from other parts of country will show their interest in conducting these programs if we talk about the academic structure of ptmt so this is for the teachers who are uh, watching this uh, presentation or who want to conduct ptnt camps so if any college or university want to conduct this program then it should be planned 6 month in advance uh, regional workshops uh, are preferred than national workshops and preference will be given to those institution who have local support or partial support from their resources the process of uh, selecting candidates will be done 
ten weeks before the camp, and PTMT camps are focused on one subject. That is uh, real analysis, linear algebra, and function analysis. So, guiding principle of PTMT is to infuse a good practice of teaching by observation and then by adaptation. Like uh, as Kumarisan sir, uh, every time in in his uh, video lecture or every time in the class says that best way of teaching is to think in front of students. So, with this uh, principle, PTMT. Uh, design their program and make it uh, right now. If if we see it was a very successful programs for making teacher uh, making teacher with some power by empowering the teacher. So if we see the uh, pictures of previous PTMT programs, so this is a picture of uh, PTMT 2015 at ICT Mumbai. This is PTMT uh, 2016 at Andhra Pradesh. This is PTMT 2018 at Central University Tamil Nadu. 2019 at SGTB Khalsa College Punjab. In 2023 again at SGTB Khalsa College Punjab. and this is some uh, pictures from the discussion during uh, ptmt now uh, i would like to invite uh, mr rohit kumar upadhyay who is a uh, ptmt alumni in sgtv khalsa college punjab in 2019 to share his experience and further carry on this presentation by introducing the other speakers so over to uh, rohit sir thank you rohit sir uh, good evening everyone uh, i am rohit kumar upadhyay a phd student at mnit allahabad i have always been inspired by the teaching methodology of mtts which i credit to my bsc teachers this motivation led me to pursue a career in this field i strongly recommend that all the students and teacher present here or watching it on the youtube consider taking some time to attend the programs like this uh, you will have the opportunity to learn a lot meet with the expert make friends and of course explore new places during my bsc and msc i participated in numerous workshop and mathematics programs throughout india after completing my msc i joined a degree college in mumbai as an assistant professor of mathematics it was during this time that i had the privilege of attending ptmt 2019 at khalsa college punjab attending ptmt 2019 significantly transformed my approach of to teaching mathematics i began implementing a similar methodology with my students for for example uh, after presenting a theorem a problem on board i encouraged them to consider all possible ways to approach it and i ask the answers from them and then uh, with the step by step uh, giving solution by their by asking questions all the time and uh, i complete the proof and subsequently i requested them that write the solution by their self without looking at the board that uh, this these techniques actually uh, motivated and fostered a strong interest in mathematics among my students so that's what i feel that every teacher can try this you can just uh, do uh, you can uh, just explain the theorems and problems and then try then ask them to write the theorem write the proof by their self without looking on the board and uh, yeah whatever i am today or i'll be becoming in future mtts has plays uh, played a pivotal role in my journey i want to express my heartfelt gratitude to all my mtts family members thank you so much now i request uh, so next slide so next slide yes now i request uh, mr krishnan sharma to express his views of ptmt Uh, thank you rohit uh, good evening everyone am i audible 
yes you are audible okay uh first of all i want to thank so uh, all my ptmt organizers and friends they gave me a chance uh, to share my experience in the ptmt uh, i attended the ptmt 2023 in punjab when i attended the program uh, as i have already attended the mtts programs uh, so i was aware of the methodology of the program so i thought uh, that uh, what more can i learn but to my surprise i learned a lot from the program uh, firstly i used to thought uh, that uh, only proofs can be uh, understood and uh, they can be created but after attending the program uh, i know that the statements and the theorems and results you are uh, reading they are not just randoms they are also uh, are done by critical thinking and independently thinking and they can also be independently formed you just don't need to remember all these things another uh, best part of the ptmt program is that uh, there is always a two way communication uh that uh, generally we lacks uh, uh, in our education system generally we come to the class we teach the students we don't ask any problem but uh, in mtts or ptmt there is always a two way communications they just don't deliver the lecture and complete the topic they engage you in their thinking process and uh, you uh, don't need to remember things you just need to understand things another aspect is that uh, like in class you always face uh, different types of students uh, like some students learn uh, slowly some are fast like that uh, in ptmt you will get to know about a lot of teachers because uh, it's a program for the teachers so you need to know about a lot of teachers and uh, every, you learn not from the teachers they are teaching you but also from the teachers from the different uh, participants because uh, there is a session they call it discussion session in that uh, you discuss with other teachers so they have also have experience so you can also learn from them another thing is that uh, uh, you get to join with the group of people uh, from all over the world uh, like i have joined and they call it a group of curry leaf and uh, they will give you platform to improve your presentation skills communication skills organizing skills and many more things so at last i want to say that there is a quote of tiger woods that uh, no matter how good you get you can always get better and that's the exciting part and i feel that for me ptmt or mtts never fail to deliver this in their participants you will always get better uh, whenever you join any program it doesn't matter it's a ptmt or mtts or o any other program you will always learn and always get better so that's all from my side thank you krishnan for your motivating talk okay uh, next uh, i would request uh, mr tamkur sir to express his views Uh, good evening to all of you uh, uh first of all sorry to all i am traveling in the bus uh, it may be uh, might be some uh, noise disturbing so i started my ptmt uh, journey from the 2019 from the stdb khalsa college and uh, one of the most interesting thing that how i joined the mtts through the ptmt i heard about the mtts from my uh respected sir akash sir then i heard about the professor kumarson then it was my dream to attend the professor kumarson classes so when i was teaching in the university then i applied for the ptmt and uh, and i got selected for that and uh, the thing that which i learned uh, in the ptmt camp that when you uh, connect with the different uh, teachers and uh, the main agenda of the ptmt uh, as uh, professor kumarson also uh, told that the group discussion so by discussion with the different types of the teachers i learned that how we can use the critical thinking and how we can themselves revise the proof in mind then how we can write it in plain paper before uh, what we can uh, see the proof then all over the main thing that which i delivered after the p first ptmt 
uh, when I back to the university, then I specially uh, took some lectures of the BSc student as well as the MSc student. Then I deliver all the uh, points to them that how you can prove the result and how you can use the critical thinking in every result and how you can revise the proof in your mind. After that, I told them how the student itself they discuss and how the discussion will be the more important to prove any result. And the second thing that after the second PTMT, which I uh, attended in April 3 to 8 in 2013 in Punjab, uh, what are the improvement uh, I got in my life? First, the improvement that I learned or I get from the PTMT, that is the teaching methodology. That means how I improve myself to think critically in every result of the mathematics, how I can learn the proof just in critically. And the most important that uh, right now I am teaching in a school, but uh, I give all the result and the knowledge and the ideas which are learned through the PTMT. And the students of uh, uh, class plus two really appreciate because uh, till plus two they uh, never ever try to think logically or critically and never try to how to prove the result by discussion. So when I shared these points and how your discussion is more important to prove any result and they really appreciate it. And uh, this is only possible uh, because of the MTTS, because the platform MTTS provide and the uh, ideas they provide was really, really appreciated. I really uh, thankful to all the MTTS and the PTMT uh, trust are giving us so uh, wonderful opportunity. At last, uh, I just share one thing that we became successful by what we get, but we became happier, but we give. So I am in the process why I'm just giving that knowledge to the student through the MPTS. And I really thank to Professor Kumrasan and all the PTMT teachers and the, all the alumni uh, because when you connected with the another teachers, then you got a different idea. And by the this thing, I uh, work as a mentor in online OSTM 2013. From there, I also lot of, learned a lot of things. And that after attending the OFCM, I shared that knowledge on the next day in my class. So at last, I'm just saying thanks to all and thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. It was wonderful experience. I request uh, Dr. Sunil, sir, to express his views. Uh, thank you, Rohit, sir. Good evening, everyone. I am Sunil Kumar Sharma, an assistant professor in the Department of Mathematics, Siddharth Government College, Nadon, Himachal Pradesh. Uh, I would like to share my experience and journey with MTDS. Before 2015, I was not aware of MTDS. In 2015, IIT Mandi organized uh, the MT mini MTDS program. And one of my friend, a research scholar at IIT Mandi, uh, sent me a brochure and informed me about the program. Uh, five students from my college were selected for the mini MTTS program at IIT Mandi. After attending this program, uh, these students not only gained valuable knowledge, but also significantly boosted their confidence. And since then, I, I have made it a regular practice to motivate and encourage students uh, to participate in and attend various programs organized by MTTS. Uh, over the year, approximately 35 students have uh, uh, the opportunity to attend event like mini MTTS, OFCM, follow up programs, or initiation into mathematics program. Four of uh, our students have successfully completed summer camp organized by MTTS, which is a remarkable achievement to our college as well as our state. What's even more impressive is that three of them have completed their MSc degree from institution like NIT or Central University. These students not, uh, have not only excelled academically, but also have a qualified net GRF examination uh, during their MSc. And uh, now they are currently pursuing their uh, PhD from NIT Hamirpur or uh, Central University Punjab. And uh, 
one thing uh, that I want to share with all of you uh, that uh, MTDS alumni from my college, they have created a, a mathematics club. In this mathematics club, uh, we have students of BSc first year, second year, uh, third year. They are conducting regular uh, classes uh, from 9.30 uh, to 10 a.m. in the morning every day. And they're focusing uh, on discussing the fundamental topics uh, on mathematics like foundation uh, analysis courses, real analysis, algebra courses. And this initiative will enable students to address their doubts and uh, provide them with opportunity to deliver lectures in front of their peers, which will help to boost their confidence. Now uh, about my PTMT journey. In 2019 uh, and 2023, I had the privilege to attending uh, the PTMT, Pedagogical Training for Mathematics Teacher on Real Analysis and Functional Analysis at Shri Guru Tegh Bahadur Khalsa College, Anandpur Sahib, Punjab, which was a valuable experience for me. During this session, I had the privilege uh, of meeting Professor S. Kumresan, Professor Santanam, Professor Srinivasan, Professor Sukumar, and uh, Professor Soma Sutras. I came to realize that the teaching methodology employed by the MTTS faculty was distinct from what I had encountered in various uh, other institutions. Inspired by Professor Kumresan teaching methodology, I began implementing the same teaching style in my own classroom. And it greatly benefits students. I am very thankful to MTDS uh, provide me uh, the opportunity to serve as a mentor in OFCM and uh, as a coordinator in one of the OFCM program. After attending PTMT in 2019, uh, we formed a group comprising uh, four faculty members, Dr. Sangeet Pathak, Dr. Rohit Gandhi, Dr. Gaurav Sharma and myself. We uh, commenced online teaching uh, for students in Himachal Pradesh and uh, Punjab. Up to uh, this uh, point, uh, we have organized six online programs focused on foundation course and uh, real analysis and uh, linear algebra. And we have not uh, charged any fee uh, from the students. We purchase a Google subscription uh, from our own resources for online classes. Last year, we conducted an online program on geometric approach in real analysis. And we are immensely grateful to Dr. Satya, Dr. Vikram, and Dr. J. Mehta sir for their support and delivering online session during this program. Till now, approximately 400 students uh, have attended our program. So re recently, MTTS uh, Trust showed uh, trust in me and uh, gave me the opportunity to conduct initiation into mathematics program in Himachal Pradesh, where I served as a local coordinator and uh, as a resource person. So this experience was truly a remarkable opportunity uh, for me to be part of MTGSC. I am grateful to Professor Kumresan and uh, President of MTGS Trust, Professor Santhanam sir, for providing me the chance to lead the initiation into mathematics program in Himachal Pradesh in 2023. I am committed to serving whatever duties MTD has given to me, assigned to me in future. Thank you. Thank you. Have, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Over to Thank you, you so much, Sunil, sir. It was great to see your experience. Okay, uh, now, uh, let us talk about some future activities which we are planning. Uh, uh, Rohit, sir, next slide. Yeah. So first thing, just like in MTTS, we uh, used to encourage students to present a seminar on, a, on some topic. Similarly, what we are planning with our PTMT alumni, we will uh, invite them for uh, some alumni talks. And this, this PTMT day will be there as, as usual in every year, along with the collaboration with Curry Leaf. And the next new thing which we are planning is PTMT alumni talks. We'll be having a series of talks on pedagogical aspect of former PTMT participants and other dedicated to enhance mathematical te teaching and learning at the college level. If you are interested, you can contact us. And then uh, let me remind you again about the forthcoming PTMT camp, uh, which is at VIT. And these are the dates. If you are interested, you can uh, go ahead. And, and one more thing, uh, uh, just you have uh, heard so many experiences from other 
uh, we are planning to have a database of uh, how the how the teachers are implementing their ptmt knowledge see uh, just i told you uh, about uh, that uh, you have uh, you do not ask the ask, ask the student to look at on the board and do the uh, writing part similarly uh, many teachers have tried, implemented something new so uh, we should uh, have a collection of that and that will help the new teachers to learn how to teach mathematically or how to talk mathematically so that is the next plan we are having and uh, next uh, Rohit sir, uh, for any uh, contact, you can either see Curry Leaf channel, Facebook or Instagram pages, and you can uh, directly contact me and uh, Rohit Gandhi sir for any uh, uh, any uh, query on participation. I would like to thank all the people present here and MTTS family. I would like to thank. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Rohit Gandhi and Rohit Upadhyay for giving the insight of the PTMT, its idea, its rationale, its inception, and sharing wonderful experience by the speakers after attending what, what are the change they have felt in their teaching, methodology, and other kind of conduct. So thank you so much. The second event of the today's program is the talk by Dr. Jay Mehta. Dr. Jay Mehta, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Sardar Patel University, Vallabh Vidyanagar, Anand, Gujarat. The title of the talk is Generalized Proof of Infinitude of Primes. Dr. Mehta has completed his PhD from Harish Chandra Research Institute, Prayagraj, Allahabad, in 2015. And also, he completed his postdoc from the Institute of Mathematical Sciences, Chennai, in 2016. Dr. Mehta, since 2019, Dr. Mehta is associated with MTTS different activities. With this brief introduction, I invite Dr. Mehta for his talk. Uh, thank you, Monica, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Karili uh, for inviting me to speak on this PTMT day and also Satya sir for encouragement uh, for this. Uh, my proof, the talk is very small. And uh, also, it is very, very, very general in mathematics. So it would like, uh, uh, because the problem is like that. It appeals a lot of uh, people in mathematics, ranging from even school students to any uh, uh, mathematics enthusiasts. So uh, if I directly give the proof, it may not take more than 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. But I'll walk you through the process of uh, and source how it came because uh, the thought originated from an MTTS program. So uh, let me start by sharing my screen. Yeah, it's uh, is my screen visible. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so primes we already know, right? Uh, so first of all, what, what do you mean by uh, uh, divisibility? So if we have, let's say, uh, two integers, and usually we take uh, b non-zero, we say that uh, b divides a, if uh, we can say that a equals to b into c, for some, or there exists some c integers, so that this, right? And then primes also, uh, we know. So we say that uh, an integer uh, p, which is greater than or equals to two, is it's called a prime. If the only positive divisors of p are uh, one and p itself. So 
uh, in some books also we say that uh, p is a prime if uh, p divides a b implies uh, p divides a or p divides b right uh, why we take greater than equals to 2 because uh, and because whenever whenever a divisor is there there is always a negative divisor so we consider only positive divisors and so the primes have exactly two divisors two positive divisors one and p uh, now one is again a number uh, which has the only divisors only positive divisors are one and one itself I and mean, one and the same number but and in that case you'll have only one divisor that is why usually I mean, it is always uh, we start with uh, integer greater than equals to two, right? And uh, so the question is, uh, how many primes are there? It is already known that there are uh, there are infinitely many primes. This is the main result. Right? This is already known that there are infinitely many primes. But there are several proofs of this. So the first one uh, is believed to be given by Euclid, which is very famous. And because there are all teachers here, we know we usually teach this version of the proof. So first one was given by Euclid. And I think it was in around 300 BC. So he was believed to give the first one to the uh, proof of this, which is very simple. And it uses a fact, uh, it uses a result which is, uh, it is based on this fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And this says that uh, any integer greater than or equal to 2 can be written as a finite product of prime powers. That finitely many prime powers, any integer greater than equals to 2 can be written as either it is a prime, so in that case also it is a prime power, or it can be written as a finite product of prime powers. Or in other words, if we have any integer greater than equals to 2, then there is a prime dividing uh, that integer. So if n is greater than equals to 2, then uh, there exists some prime p uh, such that p divides n. Euclid's proof is based on this fact. And there are several proofs uh, even in the literature since the past 20th century, more than 20 centuries. Uh, there are proofs based on, uh, so one proof was given by uh, Goldbach. Uh, in around uh, 1730, I guess, and it is based on uses Fermat numbers. We know this is f n equals to. We have this form two raised to two raised to n plus one, and then uh, uh, Euler gave a proof. Euler's proof is there, uh, which is uh, uses sums and products of reciprocals of primes. And there are, there are many other uh, proofs which are uh, based on uh, uses techniques in, in algebra analysis. topology, even trigonometry. So over the years, everybody, I mean, they find another proof and a new proof comes and there are several, several proofs. Many interesting short proofs are there. So uh, the main focus is uh, on the Euclid's proof, which was very simple and goes like this. So. Uh, So you, you play the assume, so suppose there are, uh, let's say, finitely many primes. Suppose there are finitely many primes, say, uh, P1, P2, 
NPN. So there are, let's say, N primes. Uh, now, what Euclid's idea is, and everybody knows this, even school students uh, know this too. The idea is that uh, Euclid creates uh, this integer, P1, P2, the product of this. Uh, finitely many, of course, uh, when we say finitely many and we say n primes, uh, they are all distinct. And then plus one. Right. And then uh, notice that n is greater than all pi. Because uh, product plus one. And so by fundamental theorem of arithmetic, there must be a prime uh, dividing n. So if we say let's p1 divides n, p1 divides n, and p1 appears in the product, therefore p1 divides the product, and therefore p1 divides the difference, and so p1 divides 1, uh, which is not possible because p1 is a prime. Similarly, p2 cannot divide n, because if p2 divides n, and p2 divides the product, so it divides the difference, so it divides 1, again it is not possible, p2 being a prime. So all this p1 to pn, uh, they do not divide n, so pi does not divide n for all i. And so n is uh, a number which is not divisible by any of the primes. So n is a prime, or it is contradicting to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And uh, that's why uh, this is this contradiction says that uh, the number of primes are infinite. So this is the proof. And uh, this was a proof which I uh, presented in uh, 2019. Uh, I think Jyoti is. There, uh, one of the participants uh, is attending this uh, program, and uh, that RI Ajme, I presented this proof. At that time, I just discussed this proof uh, in the level O, and uh, at that time, I did not think of anything else. But then I was uh, doing Chinese remainder theorem, which was, I think, my last session. So, just to deviate uh, a couple of minutes, what is Chinese remainder theorem? Uh, it says that uh, system of uh, linear congruences, we have x1 is congruent to a1 mod m1, x2 is congruent to a2 mod m2, and so on. Uh, sorry, x is congruent to, I mean, uh, x is congruent to a1 mod m1, x is congruent to a2 mod m2, and so on. Suppose we have like this. So this has uh, a unique solution. Uh, this system has a unique uh, solution, modulo m, which is nothing but the product of this moduli, m1, m2, uh, mk. Uh, if, uh, of course, if GCD of their mi, mj equals to 1, they are pairwise relatively prime, this moduli, then uh, the system has unique solution. There is, there is unique x which uh, satisfies uh, the system of congruences. And uh, when I was discussing the proof, so the proof had the construction, the x, which looks something like this. So x is of the form a1, uh, x is of the form a1, m1, b1, plus a2, m2, b2, plus, and so on, AK, MK, BK. Right. So AIs are already given. Uh, what is MI? So MI is nothing but uh, M upon small MI, this moduli. That means a product M1, M2 to MK upon MI. So which will be M1, M2, MI will be gone from the product. So something like this. So this is nothing but uh, the product upon M1. So this is, uh, so M1 is nothing but M2 onwards, M2, M3, and Mk. M2 will be M1, M3, uh, M4 up to Mk, and so on. And what is Bi? Bi is, uh, is a solution of uh, the congruence x into uh, mi so it's an inverse of this modulo m 
Okay, I'm not going into details of this, but the idea is like this. Okay, when we take modulo M1, if I take modulo M1, all this will be zero. Because in M2, there is M1. In M2, M2 is not there. Capital M2, small M2 is not there. Here, small M1 is not there. But M1 appears in all of this. So if I take modulo M1, all this is zero. And B1 is the inverse of capital M1. So this will get cancelled and it gives me A1. So it satisfies this. When I take modulo M2, uh, M2 is not appearing, small M2 uh, is not appearing in this capital M2. M2 is here. M2 is there in M3 also. So all these terms will be zero. This will be zero. And from here onwards, this is zero. And again, this B2 is inverse of M2. So this will be one. And we are left with A2, which will give us uh, and which will satisfy this. So this type of integer x satisfy all this. So at that time I got uh, this thought that uh, why only we are like considering this type of numbers. I've never had any read any other proof of infinitude of lines other than uh, this Euclid's proof because this is very standard appearing in every number theory book. And so uh, I got this idea that instead of this, instead of this, this is the Euclid's kind of number e generated an integer instead of this i can take uh, something like this n equals to uh, suppose we have n primes so instead of this this was done by Euclid. let me write here again so instead of this you can take n equals to p2 p3 and up to pn plus instead of using plus one we do like this so i remove p1 from the first one and i remove p2 from the second one P, P1, P3, and Pn plus, and so on. And the last one, P1, P2, all are there, but up to Pn minus 1. So this is also an integer. And again, this will, idea is same, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And it is, but it's a different number. Like we never think, uh, we never discuss with the students as the, uh, the teachers who spoke before me said that they give students this idea. So this was the thought that came to mind. We never think like why this kind of thing is there. What is so special about this? The only thing was to produce an integer uh, which is not divisible by any of the primes. So there may be more than one ways to do that. This is one easy way. This is also another way. Uh, the thought came from Chinese Remender Theorem during the MPTS uh, program in 2019. So P1, uh, suppose P1 divides n. So P1 divides... Uh, all these terms because p1 appearing here so p1 divides the difference and that means p1 must divide this but because p1 is a prime p1 must be uh, one of these primes but because they are distinct prime p1 does not divide uh, n so similarly I say p2 so p2 divides uh, the first term and then third term onwards all the terms p2 is not dividing this so if p2 divides n then it will divide the difference so it will divide this term but because they are distinct prime uh, it is not possible. So P2 does not divide this. P3 does not divide the third term and so on. Pn does not divide the n term. So like that, this is again uh, an integer produced like this, which is not divisible by any of the primes. And we can, uh, so this was uh, one idea, right? And then I thought that we can also have something like this. This is, uh, if I, I can also take, suppose I have 10 primes, let's say P1 to P10. And I can take five primes here also, P1, P2, up to P5, and then plus P6, P7, and not like that. We can divide it into two parts also, right? Uh, like this. This is uh, first number. So if P1 divides N, then P1 divides this term also. So P1 divides the difference. So P1 divides uh, the product P6, P7 to P10. So P1 must be one of this, but because there are distinct 10 primes, we assume n primes. So n we can divide into two parts also. Right? And why not two parts? We can divide why only two parts? Why why not more than that? So n we can divide into three parts also. Let's say P1, P2, P3, plus I have P4. Uh, so I multiply this. P3 and P4, P5, P6. Plus, uh, then I'm using P1, P2, P3, then P7, P8, P9, P10, plus something like this, this is an idea, uh, P4, P5, or 2, P10. 
So the idea is that you take any prime, it is exactly appearing in only one term. So P1, uh, it is exactly not appearing in one term. So P1 divides this, P1 divides this. If P1 has to divide and then it has to divide this. It's not possible because of distinct times. Similarly, P2 is appearing in this and this. So it is not here. So P5, let's say, so P5 is in the first term and the third term. So if P5 divides n, then it must divide this, which is not possible because they are all distinct primes. So you can partition uh, the n primes into uh, different sets and then take take the product of all primes, excluding just one set. That was the idea, uh, which I thought may be a new proof. So I discussed with uh, maybe a very few students on the last day when I was leaving. But then when I came back, I was uh, preparing the notes of whatever I uh, discussed in the, in the two weeks there. And I thought to write this separately, uh, this idea. Then uh, it turned out that this proof is exactly uh, something given by, uh, this is given by Metro uh, in 1979, this one. Right. And uh, this proof, n equals to m plus n, these two parts. Uh, this was given by still this. So you already the uh, Euclid's idea, uh, the same uh, idea behind that proof is already discussed. But then I uh, wrote a general proof uh, to generalize all this. So what I did was, uh, so this is uh, initial idea. So what I was, what I thought was, uh, let us take, uh, assume that there are finitely many primes and I take P1, P2, Pn. So this is my set of primes. And then uh, we partition P. Into K sets. So into K sets, so we have a partition uh, A1, A2, AK. So N, N primes are partitioned into uh, K sets. So partition by partition, we know that one prime appears each uh, PI appears in exactly one AJ. Right, so the, here is the partition. So, for a, for example, this one A one is P one P two P three. Here I take A two is uh, P four P five P six, and then A three is P seven P eight P nine P ten. So this is a partition. So every prime is exactly in one. It is there, and so if I take union of all this. Union J equals to 1 to K, AJ. So this will be our set uh, P. All the primes will be there. And what we have is AI intersection AJ. Uh, because it's a partition, no prime is appearing in more than one. Right? Then the idea is simple. Then the idea, as I discussed, so here I used... Uh, I used all the primes uh, from A1, A2. So this is A1, A2. A3 is uh, discarded. So primes in A3 will not divide this term, but it will divide all these terms, right? So here I have used A1, A3, A2 is removed. And this here I've used uh, A2, A3, A1 is removed. Again, same thing like uh, the idea was here. So this is what I did. Uh, so, uh, this number n is equals to, uh, in the first, uh, I take product of primes. So, in the first, I take product of primes in uh, AI. So, P in uh, AI, I equals to uh, 1 to n. Uh, in the first one, I take... Uh, I not equals to one plus, and in the second term again, product of primes, uh, P not in A two, 
and all other things. And then again, like this, in the last one, I take P not in uh, A and AK. All the primes which are not in AK, all other primes, all other uh, all other partitions are taken. So then again, same thing, uh, that uh, if there is a prime, say P1, so P1 is there in, uh, if suppose P1 is in A1, here there is, uh, P1 is uh, not appearing, it is appearing all this. If P1 divides N, then it divides the difference. So then it divides this term. But then again, uh, P1 is not there in the, they are all distinct times. So again, the same idea. So how do we recover this uh, proof uh, of metroid? Uh, if I take uh, AI equals to PI, I equals to 1 to N. So I take all n primes, I take n, n sets, all single terms. So then my integer n will be, uh, this is product of primes not appearing in A1. So again, it will be P2, P3, Pn. So this is a prime P is not in A1. So if P1 is not there. Then in the second term, I'll take prime which is not in A2, but A2 is the prime P2 itself single term. So I have all other products, P1, P3, and so on, P and, and same way. Here, the last one, P is not in A, 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 K, which here, K equals to N. I've taken K equals to N, all single terms. So, P1, P2, uh, P, N minus 1. So, if we give this integer, then this proof is generalized by taking this kind of partition. Even still, this proof, it takes only two partitions. So here we take any uh, any subset of P. A is any subset of P. And let's take proper subset of P. And another set we take uh, P minus A. So A complement. So I take the partition A and P minus A. So my number N will be now uh, product of primes uh, not in A. P in P, but P is not in A, plus product of primes uh, uh, in P, but not in uh, P minus A. So this will be the primes uh, appearing in P minus A. So let's say five primes are here. Let's say my A is uh, P1 to P5, and uh, then P minus A will be P6 to P10, suppose there are 10 times. So five primes will be here, which will be P6 to P10 plus uh, this is in uh, not in P minus A. So I'll have P1, P2, P5. Uh, so this will be P in A. So if I take two sets as a partition, if I partition the set of primes into two sets, one set and its complement, and then uh, then I have this still this proof, which is uh, nothing but this is n plus m form and again same thing we can discuss but then uh, euclid's proof is gone because if i want euclid's proof uh, i have to consider all the primes to recover euclid proof i have to take a partition in which so n is like this the n prime so here the set is completely p and this one has to be an empty set, right? Because uh, here I take the primes which are uh, not in P. So primes which are not in P, so it's an empty set. And uh, here, primes which are not in empty set. So all the primes you have to take, something like this. So in that case, if I if you have to consider the partition, we cannot take just uh, partition P. You have to take this partition, empty set and P. And there are uh, references like Bourbaki and all, uh, which allow this kind of partition also, empty set in the partition. Okay, so this was the initial thought. And uh, then after I wrote this, uh, the generalized thing, and I wrote the remark and all, uh, I hope it is clear on what the idea is. If anybody has any question or anything, comment or something to say, you can unmute and say. So, uh, yeah, that, that was the idea. But then, uh, as you know, that there are many uh, journals which publish this kind of uh, 
generalized proof or new proof or geometric proof or a new approach or some such problems or any solutions to such problems. Uh, one of them is uh, American Please mathematical me. monthly. Yeah. Uh, can you go a little up there? Uh, I is equal to yeah. one to three. Since you told some comments, so just little little ah, yeah. up further. Yeah. Yes. Uh, here, ah. n equal to i is not equal to 1, i equal to 1 to k. Ah, yeah, k, k, sorry. Oh. So, uh, yeah, so it is summation mm, j equals to 1 to k, product of p is not in aj. And this p, yes. So the first product removes the uh, primes, takes the product of all the primes except the uh, first set, A1. And then the second one will discard all the primes in the second set, A2, and take the uh, product of rest of them. Uh, so K partitions, K sets, N primes distributed in K sets. So if we take N sets, one, one prime each in set, then we have this proof. If I take only just two sets, half of the prime or whatever, some primes in this, some primes, and then the rest of the complements. So it, this will take product uh, which is not in A. So product of this, this will take the product which is not in its complements. So product of uh, primes in A. So this is uh, n plus n. This is what still this proof is there. So after I wrote this, uh, here there was a problem. Uh, I have to take an empty part set in the partition. I cannot consider entire P. Because uh, primes not in P will give me one, but then again I want all the product of primes. So this is again an empty product. Empty product is one, and then again uh, P. So instead of this, we allow this kind of uh, partition where we allow empty set also in the partition. So then I submitted this, uh, and uh, this is a very good journal, American Math Monthly. This journal produces and publishes articles like this. These are some uh, good problem or their solutions or some new proof or geometric approach or something like that. So, but then uh, what I got uh, the comments is that because uh, the problem is already so elementary, primes and all, the partition is difficult for people to understand except those who are really in uh, uh, mathematics, those who are doing mathematics except uh, this problem is very uh, fundamental, elementary, that everybody can understand that primes and division and all. But this partition is already complicating the proof. So then I uh, discarded the idea. And then uh, and a year later, uh, I thought, why not use uh, division itself? Instead of using partition, why not uh, use uh, division itself? I Basically, I wanted some divisors. So this is also a divisor of P1, P2, Pn. This is also a divisor of P1, P2, Pn product. This is also a divisor of P1, P2, Pn. This is also every, everywhere we are using devices and we are splitting it. So this was the final idea. Uh, this take uh, P equals to P1, P2, Pn. So we have, uh, say, n primes taking the product. And now the uh, so factorize. P into uh, K factors. Yeah, so factorize P into K factors, uh, D1, D2, DK. So we have K factors. For example, if uh, we have 10 primes, so we have product of 10 primes. And uh, we have, let's say, three factors, D1, D2, D3. So we have like this, uh, D1, D2, D3. So P equals to D1, D2, D3. And so the, because there are 10 distinct primes, uh, what will happen is that D1 will consume some of the primes, D2 will have some of the primes, and D3 will have some of the primes. Now, exactly, this is just like partition, but without going into the partition of uh, the set of primes. Just like that. D1 may be a P1, P2, P3 is nothing but D1, let's say, whatever we considered earlier. And D2 can be P4, P5, P6, 
and this can be uh, 278, 90, 10, so something like this. So just take the factors, k factors, instead of taking the partitions, so everybody can understand, uh, because again, factorization only, uh, that's what original problem was. And then create an integer like this. So now n equals to, um, we have p upon, I want the product of all primes. So p is already there. This is what I used in uh, the partition also. Product of all primes, but I want to remove the first uh, partition. Here a1 was removed. Uh, primes uh, which were not in a1. Here a2 was removed and so on. So what I do is I, instead of this, I take divide by the factor d1. So then it will be uh, e4 up to p10. p1, p2, p3 will be gone. And then again p upon d2. So again, the primes in the second factor are gone, which is exactly second partition, but without going into partition, and so on, p upon dk. So this is the idea, the simple, uh, again, this integer. And now, here we don't have to assume any non-empty or empty partition or empty set in the partition or anything. Just simple. And obviously, uh, because uh, these are the factors, and the product is p, so uh, p is this product of all primes. So each prime is there in exactly one of this because they are all distinct primes. So again, the same like partition. And so primes in uh, dividing d1 will not divide this term. It will divide all other terms. Primes uh, which are dividing d2 will not divide second term. It will divide all other terms. So if p1 let, let's say p1, because it is in d1, p1 divides d1, so p1 does not divide this, and p1 divides this, so if p1 divides n, it is not possible. So similarly, p2 does not divide this term, and then also, uh, so p2 also does not divide this term, p3 also does not divide this term, p4 will not divide this term, p5, p6 won't divide this, so just like that, uh, the same idea. And so this integer is again, an integer which is not divisible by any of the primes of pi. So pi does not divide n for all i equals to 1 to n. So we have produced this and instead, now how do we get uh, all the three proofs? I hope uh, this is clear, right? It's just a simple proof. This is what I said. If I give this integer, it won't take more than five minutes because you all know what is uh, divisibility and primes and all. So this is the integer. So then, uh, we have Euclid's proof, and then the proof by Metrode, and by uh, still this. So for Euclid proof, I, so P is this, product of P1, P2, Pn. For Euclid proof, we take K equals to two factors, and the two factors, particular case D1 is one, and D2 is entire P. So we just write uh, p equals to 1 into p. So this is my d1 and this is my d2. And in that case, what I'll get is n equals to uh, p by d1. So which is uh, p1 to pn, d1 is 1. So it is product of all primes and then p by d2. But d2 is being d2 being p, it is 1. So I get n uh, is the integer which was uh, which was considered by in the Euclid's proof. And in this, if there are n primes, we take n factors and we take di equals to pi. So d1 is p1, d2 is v2. So n product of n primes and we divide by n factors. So n will be, uh, so that will be p upon uh, product p1, p2, pn upon d1. d1 is p1. So what we are left with P2, P3 up to Pn plus. Then we have again product P1, P2, Pn divided by D2. D2 is P2, so P2 is gone. So we have P1, P3, Pn and so on. Uh, P1 to Pn minus one. So this is the integer considered by metro. And again, still this proof, again, uh, K equals to two. Here we don't have any restriction on D1, D2. 
so we have d1 d2 uh, two uh, divisors and so n will be nothing but p upon d1 plus p upon d2 which is uh, the form n plus m so this is the way which uh, used uh, uh, the integer which one proof unifies all the people so it's a it's not a new proof and not a new idea at all so there is nothing new in this but uh, the thing is uh, why i like it because the thought was originated from an mpts program where i was teaching and then i thought why not like get it published so this was uh, published in the college mathematics journal this is again like a american mathematical monthly and it also publishes some uh, new proofs or new ideas or problems or solution to certain some interesting problems uh this was in 2022 and uh, yeah so this is there are many other proofs uh, one proof was uh, given by my colleague uh, by my uh, phd junior vivekanan uh, maji and uh, he gave a new proof uh, of infinity of times uh, which is again this is uh, another such a magazine journal resonance uh, in december 2015 he was my junior at hri he also published uh, this paper uh yeah so with this i end here are, are there any comments or anything no oh, just one comment vivekananda yeah. ji gave a talk also here in kareli ah okay oh good i ah, yes, yes you were mentioning the time, yeah ah the same thing yes. so one can see his uh, video also in kareli Shall I stop sharing? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jam Hatha. Now the floor is open for any kind of comment or query or question, if anyone has. Thank you so much. Appreci appreciation from Dr. Sunil. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Jam Hatha, for giving a wonderful talk. And the uh, idea is that how one can think that the statement of the uh, Euclid's theorem is very simple. Anyone school kid can understand. But when we think mathematically and all and ask questions ourselves, that why the Euclid took this particular form. So this why question gives the idea that how we can think. And then you have explained beautifully that one can think just by simple why. So very nicely you have explained your ideas. And I think the motivation for others also that one can think and motivate our students it always ask why and i think this is the training of the mtts so thank you so much dr jay mehta mm -hmm. and thank you to uh, kareli's maths club for doing all kind of organizational part thank you so much and thank you professor satya for taking initiative for the i think execution of this PTMT day. Uh, Professor Satya, would you like to comment anything? No, 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 nothing actually. Thank you, actually. Yeah, so. Anyone nice else would like to say something? Yeah.